The Sports Mastery Workbook was created for the student athlete and the parent to work through together. The Sports Mastery Workbook was created for the student athlete and the coach to work through together. It was created in a sense and in a way to bridge the gap in communication between these parties and build a successful relationship dynamic. To learn more, visit sportsmastery.com forward slash workbook or check out the show notes page and click on the link. And now back to the show. Today, we're going a different route. We're going to be talking about specialization, early specialization, late specialization, and time allocation. I'm joined here with my co-host, Leland Johnson. The last couple of weeks, you see we had Jazz Johnson on. We were talking about attitude, overcoming adversity, the mental approach that you have to take to being a student athlete, and not only that, life in general. So we're going to continue on because some of these themes, they're intertwined with everything we're going to be discussing today. So as I said before, we're going to be discussing early specialization, late specialization, and time uh, and time allocation. So early specialization, there's some sports that you have to specialize in, such as gymnastics, ice skating. You have people that specialize in tennis early on, track and field. There's a reason and a purpose to that. You have some sports where people specialize like our non-traditional or, or, or our traditional sports like football, baseball, basketball, softball, volleyball, where specialization early on might not be too good, could set the athlete up for failure later. And what I mean by uh, early specialization from 5 to 13, when I say late specialization, I'm talking about 8th, ninth grade through the 12th grade and beyond. So Leland, when I bring up early specialization, with what we've talked about before with uh, having Sean Jenkins on the show, having Ryan do on the show, what what do you think about early specialization? Um, In a traditional sports, I I don't don't agree with it because uh, I think your kids should be allowed to experience uh, as many different types of sports or endeavors that he or she, you know, could possibly uh, do. I think between the ages of five and five and ten, that you'll start to understand what, or they'll tell you, they'll begin to let you know, you know, what they're actually having fun at, and you know, uh, if they don't have a, a, a problem with the competition. Mm-hmm. Uh, end of it, and you know, e- even even that part may be fun. They may be having so much fun that they may for- not even see it that it's it's it's, it's a competitive uh, uh, environment. So um, I just think to have them involved in many as many sports as possible is the thing to do, um, especially in our, our 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 sports: football, basketball, baseball. Um, they need to. To uh, experience soccer, they need to experience track and field, and I don't see track track and field as one of those specialization type situations, mm-hmm. um, because after all, it's the true sport. If you take a ball away, what will we be doing? Running, running. Mm-hmm. So if, if you're listening to this, ladies and gentlemen, this is definitely a prime time episode for the sports parent out there and the young coach and the or the young coach that happens to be a sports parent. You know what Leland is saying. Let your kids play four or five sports early on. If it's football, cool. Play some baseball, play basketball, do track and do track and field. And I'll say off the top. I really believe two of the first sports that you should encounter when you're young is soccer or track and field. And when I say track and field, I mean running the 100, the 200, maybe the 400, 800 if possible, you know, and even the 4 by 100 relay. Because, Leland, what I'm starting to encounter as I get deeper into my sprint knowledge, looking at the minute details of running, which is natural. Mm-hmm. You know, and I tell kids it is natural, but it's an Olympic sport. So at a certain time, uh, excuse me, at a certain time, you have to look at running as a skill. Yeah. So to get better in your sport, you're going to have to embrace it as a skill. And when when I run into kids that's been running track, 
graduating high school, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior in high school, and you encounter kids that can't even do basic skipping drills, yeah. that's a problem. Yeah. And we have to we have to attribute that to past coaches and then going back to when you start, first started to play. We don't, as a community or as a society, we're not even playing anymore, just running around on the playground and enhancing our general coordination skills. And, 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 it's, and it's weird that you say that. And I think that also... Um, Ge geographical areas and ge geographical environments um, have a have a a, a, a a big play in this also. Because if you you uh, you go to places like Florida, California, where kids are uh, uh, you know as a, as a dense population of of us, mm -hmm. you know, in those areas, um, those areas tend to be competitive. Um, and it's warm too. Uh, and, and it's warm. Um, just as far recent, as, and I said that as far as getting outside when you're younger. Yeah, just lot. recently, Chad Johnson, because um, it was interesting, me and you were having a conversation, you were saying the best sprinters are all playing football. And mm -hmm. and Chad Johnson now is throwing an event um, at Gods of Speed. Gods of Speed. And, and it's, it's, going to, it's going to reveal the fastest man in the NFL. The fastest man in the NFL is probably the fastest man in the world. Because if, if 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 you trained him, if you trained yes. him mm -hmm. like a track athlete mm -hmm. uh, uh, should train, I guarantee you, you could take. <laughs> yeah, and, and part of where that and part of where that uh, conversation comes from is a is a prior documentary that's pretty obscure on YouTube about the Jamaican sprinters, and one of the coaches was saying that the Americans are going to always have problems with the Jamaicans because one, we don't have a national sport. So we got some of our best athletes are playing football, baseball, soccer, and other sports. So you can imagine, it's like Leland said, and I know this for a fact, any guy running a 4-3 or 4-2, or that's Olympic level speed for the first 40 yards. So you could equate that to 40 meters. And those Jamaican coaches, they, they know that, yeah. you know. Uh, unfortunately, you know, you get more accolades there's more money over here when you're an amateur or it opens up more opportunity and definitely being a pro so you know over here we're looking at football more or basketball that right. outshines right. nobody's saying i'm gonna do track and field like they're gonna do aau basketball uh football then later do seven on seven football like any of the other sports so we 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 miss that but you that's know? but that's what uh uh being in a non-sport specialization situation, that's what you get. That's what you when, get. When your kid starts to experience, for example, you said soccer or track. Mm -hmm. My first sport that I got jazz involved in was, was soccer. You, you wanted to get him involved with soccer early on because you knew it was going to be other benefits. But right. you knew basketball or football would be his sport. Be but his you sport. had the sense enough because you have a background of, of uh, playing. So how you can train him different so he right. doesn't burn out later. I, need, I needed the challenge of the footwork. I needed, yes. I, needed, I needed some of those footwork drills that they do in soccer. I needed him to, to look at that and, and have that be just a, a normal thing to him. Um, uh, and I also heard a, a, a Kim Olajuwon years ago. He said uh, American parents, if they wanted their children to excel in sports, that the sport that they should play is soccer. The first yeah. sport they should play is soccer. And, and I agree with you because you, you have hand and eye coordination, but that early on track and you have soccer, feet and eye coordination. Feet and eye coordination. You know, so again... Let's look at both sides of early specialization. When you look at both sides, there's some sports due, due to height and size like gymnastics, um, ice skating, tennis to a degree, and, and, and definitely those three, you're probably going to specialize in that. The other side that will cause for specialization is, is, is if that is your national sport. You come from a place, they have cricket in Jamaica, right. but let's be clear track and field is the way out. Right. You know, if you're trying to get to a certain place economically. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the first segment of our, of our show. When I come back after these messages, we're going to get in to late specialization, how and why, when and when not to. So, A, this is Ken Folks Entertainment. Ken Folks Entertainment is a brilliant collection of wonderful people 
family-run business that can handle all of your video production and audio needs. To learn more, visit kenfolks.com with a Z. <laughs>
any business, you don't want to turn away, you know, your customers. But, um, you know, I had to, I had to be honest with him. You know, I had to take a look at where he, where he was. Um, and I, I, I asked him, I said, I said, uh, so what do you, what do you think you are on this basketball team what, amongst the, you know, from one to 15? What do you, uh, I think I'm about a six. So I equated that to where he was probably around an eight. That's you, right. We all inflate ourselves. <laughs> we all inflate ourselves, <laughs> always. And, you know, as I started to, you know, look more and more at him while we were training, um, I had a conversation with him after after the training session, after she paid me. And, and, and you know, I could possibly receive more checks if, if I wanted to. But I had to take it upon myself to help this kid because I know this kid really wants it, it, he wants to be involved in some af, some some form of uh, of, of, of athletics. Mm -hmm. So so you know to just to make it a part of his life. So what I what I what I told him was I say, man, you ever thought about running track? And he's like, well, I've been running track all my life. I just didn't run track last year. And I'm like, what are you doing? You need to be. You need to be going to see Mr. Fauntleroy, and this meet that needs to be your priority. Basketball should be just something that you leisurely like to do, and you know if you you still want to train, and you that's on your mom. But if if you're looking for something that is gonna prop that you're probably gonna be involved in on the next level or in college, then track should be the sport that you should be involved in. And that and that brings us. You know, I don't want to skip ahead. We'll skip in between the subject matter. But time allocation. As a sports parent, as a, as a young athlete, once you start, you know, I want you to maximize your time growing up from the ages of 5 to 11, 5 to 13. But now once you hit high school, we have to allocate your time appropriately because where you're at, it, they're starting to recruit younger and younger. They're starting to offer kids uh, football has been well documented offering kids in the eighth grade, ninth grade, sophomore. It's it's getting to a point. If you haven't received offers by your junior year, there you might be an anomaly. You might come later, but it's starting to happen even in football, sophomore season. In yeah. soccer, I know it's sophomore. So we once you get to high school, we have to allow a lot your time, and that's when you can see. Okay, he's going to be here, or he can go here at this sport, right. where you can see where a kid is going to be in four to five years once they get out of high school. So it's really from that point on, if you're specializing, if you're going to specialize in the sport once you get to high school, how do you approach it? And I'll tell you off the top, you have to have, you got to have eight week, ten week, twelve week periods where you're doing nothing but strength training and jump training. You have to have periods where you're mixing in the skills training at the same time. And on on, on top of that, if you can have an individual can that can accommodate you on both ends. So there's not too many I, I guess you could say masters or instructors. Yeah, I was just you know, gonna, where I, the cues stay yeah, the same. Yeah, I was just getting ready to touch on that. That, you know, right before you said that. Um um, and the last, the last, the, the, the latter, uh, not having too many uh, cooks uh, in the chefs kitchen. in the kitchen <laughs> or chefs yeah. in the kitchen. Now, and I, and I will say, having multiple people on your team is great. Like you, you know me. Uh, you'll send a kid to me that might be working with you. I've sent kids to you might be that uh, might be working with me, and that still are. So the energy is the same. The methodology is the same. Um, the expectations are the same. So you don't come back and there's two different cues going on. But see, I'm not gonna use us as an example because we kind of we we we, you know, our our relationship is unique. You know where we understand because we we've done it. We 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 did it while we were playing, and. and Yes, I took on a different aspect of it, and you took on a different aspect of it, but our foundation is the same. Yes. You know, so if you have that individual where your foundation or your understanding, your foundational understanding is the same, boom, then you, 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 you can have four or five of those individuals together. But if, if you have one individual who's not willing to or open to see your way of doing it, 
and this guy over here is looking at both of you like, and then you getting it because because you'll get that negative feedback. The, the resistance will come. Yeah, yeah. And and there shouldn't be resistance when you have a team of people working together for the best interest. If they say it's for the best interest of your son or daughter, so these individuals they have to be on the same page. And in my opinion, they should meet. Yeah. You know, I've had a mom call me and she listens to the podcast. And they're in Bethany, Pennsylvania, where I'll call the strength coach. Yes. You know, said, hey, uh, she's worried about her daughter. She feels her, uh, or her, she's worried about her son. She feels like he should be working on this and this. I met her through my podcast. So she feels like there's a mental component that little Johnny is missing. Or, that, you know, now I've made another friend on the East Coast and another listener and another follower. Or like but, your big lineman that, you, that you're working yeah, with right yep. now. You know, one of his weaknesses, upper body strength. I know Leland specializes in upper body. I'm more of a multi, multi, but if I'm not doing it, I'm going to send them to you where that's your specialty. And I was you know talking I mean? about more, I was talking about how your relationship with their coach, how you opened up, how you picked up the phone. And oh, yeah, yeah, call yeah, call the coaches and now, at, at his university. And now, their relation, now they have a relationship, and um, they're actually... Trusting the fact that that Deshaun is working with their athlete and they're looking forward to seeing him very soon and and not not expecting to see the same person. They're expecting to see a kid that's that's improved. Yeah. So it, it it's really wonderful as far as having the communication with the with the with the uh, other trainers, the strength coach, the skills coach. But then when you encounter certain people in your son or daughter's life, especially if they're at like the high school level and the collegiate level, being able to uh, reach out to like a person's head coach, their position coach. In this case, he's offensive tackle where I've communicated with the head coach and his offensive uh, line coach. So they know what he's doing. So they trust them when they're away and they trust you right. and you can build a rapport so we can destroy, I guess you could say some of the friction and resistance in our, in our industry when kids do come home. We're going to pay some bills. I need to take a sip of water. This is uh, this is a good episode. When I come back, we're going to discuss time allocation. Again, ladies and gentlemen, this, this show is brought to you by Ken Folks Entertainment. You got to go check out Ken Folks Entertainment at KenFolks.com. That's Ken Folks with a Z. <laughs> Okay, welcome back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. We're getting into the fourth quarter. Uh, we're going to discuss time allocation. Once you get to a high level, and at this point in time, I'm talking about high school. We've been talking about early specialization, late specialization. Once you find that one or two sports that you're considering going to college to play or you're starting to get offers in that sport, now we have to allocate our time. You probably not. It, it, you're doing yourself a disservice once you get to a varsity level. You're getting uh, offers in one sport. You're still trying to play three because now the school once you get offers and especially after you commit, the university, the head coach, the AD, your position coach is expecting you to come in and be at a certain place. You know, psychologically and physically. True. You know, so time allocation. You know, in my I, if you're playing football and you're a pretty good point guard, but we know your offers are for football, I'm going to tell you that you should be running track in the spring. And then as soon as football season is over, you're in the weight room with your team and you're with somebody like Leland or myself, because we know in high school, you're going to get your general needs met. But we have some special things, right. special strength things that we want to introduce you to that's going to help propel you to the next level. So what what's your thoughts, Leland, on time allocation? You know, when it comes to the subject matter, we've been discussing specialization, early specialization, late specialization. Now it's time to pick one or two. But then when you're not in season, what should that sports parent be doing? What should that athlete be doing? That 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 parent or that athlete should that should be involved with someone like yourself and myself. And when I say like yourself and myself, is because um, we're goal oriented. Mm -hmm. So I think what we're looking for when we get take that senior high school uh, 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 athlete, what we're trying to do is when 
he touches when he when he touches his feet on that college campus that uh those those trainers those head coaches mm -hmm. as far as the physicality or anything physical there's nothing that this kid is coming short of mm -hmm. cardiovascularly strength wise uh, 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 speed and agility the, in those areas um, we pride ourselves on sending that kid to that institution and as far as the physical part of the sport they don't have anything to worry about, and, to worry and, about. And, and ultimately uh, what Leland is saying and I'll just put it out there if, if you're a sports parent listening to this and, and, and what I'm going to say this goes beyond degrees this goes beyond uh, the masters. This goes beyond the bachelors. This, this goes beyond whatever sophisticated certification that uh, you're going to have your son or daughter working with. This goes beyond the guy that played in the league, whether it's NBA or NFL that happens to be a trainer. You want your son or daughter with a technician. You want your son or daughter with somebody that's connected with physical therapists chiropractors and acupuncturists that happen to be string coaches themselves and they work with athletes. I pride myself on being a technician, whether it's te teaching jump training, Olympic lifting, power lifting, anything sprint mechanics, anything revolving around sprint mechanics. And I know Leland being a basketball coach and a basketball trainer that happens to work with football athletes, O-line and D-linemen, somebody that's really a technician at teaching drills that's appropriate for that level you know so you want to allocate your time but you don't want to put your time and money in a place where it's getting wasted and you can't see any improvements where we have to measure stuff you know i i you know with what i have at the clinic i'm going to measure you by a, a functional movement screen once a quarter i'm going to measure your broad jump i'm going to measure your vertical jump i'm going to measure your 10 yard dash i'm going to measure your 40 yard dash if we're on the track we're going to see where you're at with 30 and 60 meters you know with the appropriate equipment but if you're just training to be training and you never do any measurement I'm gonna tell you right now sports parents you're wasting your freaking money with certain people or right, let's let's take it let's take it here uh, I have an athlete that I'm working with right now who is uh, probably one of the best uh, basketball players in the nation uh, we we were at a, at a workout and we were doing pistols and that's everybody who... That's pistol squats. Pistol squats. Single leg squats. That's when okay. you're doing a squat off of one leg, the independent one leg, either to right or left, but just off of one leg. And he had he had a problem with coming from a seated position, standing And up. if I'm right, this is this kid, he, he's considered the best uh, eighth grader about yeah. the inner high school Beautiful basketball kid. player. Yeah. Great kid. Great kid. Great kid. But it shows you how... Uh, how the system is kind of using him for what they need him for. It's been all basketball. It's Nothing all that basketball. physically trained his body. It's n nobody as 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 had even asked him, "Hey man, um, is there anything going on with you where we can we can you know make sure that you're not hurting and, week and, in and week out?" And and that's the thing, and that's why I think most coaches should start learning about the strength and conditioning side because they could see a kid running around on the court. You don't even know what you're looking at. You're yeah, looking at a weak thinking. body. Thank you. Uh, injury waiting to happen. And if he has a knee injury at this point, how is he going to recover psychologically? Now he has to, I just told him, I said, uh, we were talking about time allocation. Uh, I told him I wouldn't have you playing any basketball. Right. I'd allocate all your time towards your body. Towards his body. And, and if he does... <laughs> then he has a bright future. If he doesn't, then he'll be dealing with, you know, different ailments, mm -hmm. whether it be Set a knee, backs. a hip, an ankle, mm -hmm. and... And you got to psychologically be ready to go through rehab or prehab and enjoy the weight room. Enjoy strength training. True. Enjoy, enjoy doing things off the court. Get on some turf. Put on some cleats. Get in the sand. <laughs>
course parents, if you're looking for a program to help develop your student athlete, check out my course, The Edge, showing and helping the student athlete how to take effective action, developing discipline, showing them how to develop a growth mindset and expand their mind in the form of reflective thinking. This is the place you want to be. This is course. I want you to work through this course with your student athlete. It's not for them to go at it alone. This is a gap. This is a way to bridge the gap between the student athlete and sports parent and the student athlete and the coach. Check out my course, The Edge at sportsmastery.thinkific.com. I'll also have a link in the show notes.